definitely really solid players. Plus, Jake. what if they got paired? That'd be awesome. Ooh, wow. What a story. Yeah, I don't think Sarah was sitting in the middle, though. Wow. So, as you can see, an overhead view. Middle, we have John Siketic. To the right and left, obviously, his teammates. Yes. On the other side, we have Adam all the way to the right. In the middle and to the left, obviously, his, his teammates. His, te his teammates? Yeah, you got it did right, I, AJ. Did I do it? Yeah. All, all right. right. So, we have Siketic on the left. And it looks like he's playing a Demir type build, Island Swamp. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be a longer game, right? No yeah, two sure. drop. Well, I say that as he unleashes oh, a creature. Wow, but, yeah. um, All right. So three mana, two, three flyer. Yep. And um, can't block. Wow, Simic Manipulator. All right. So how do we pronounce the guys in the right name? Uh, yeah, I, did, I was I was waiting for you to do it. You so were trying to avoid you. it? Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm going to say the K-Silent, so it's, so it's Vartek. Vartek? Yeah, just, Vartek? Yeah, Vartek. All right. Ooh, okay. That's, that's a pretty good answer to the yeah. manipulator. I mean, it's it, it, it's gonna but the presumably grow to the point where it's it gonna falls fall off. off. Yeah, uh, exactly. But you know, it's it's a stopgap. Like you got to do something. You can't just let them steal all your guys. Sure. So there we see on the screen the Rakdos Drake three mana one two flyer. Pretty bad, but three mana two three flyer. A little bit better. Yeah. You know, and you can't block, but. Yeah, I mean, now we have a 3-3 Reach guy on the other side, so really the, the cards for uh, Vartek matching up quite well against uh, Jonathan Sukenik's deck. Definitely, definitely. The Moss Dog has been one of the better cards that we've seen throughout the day. 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, Reach, Scavenge, pretty much everything you want. Yeah, it's aggressively costed, plays defense really well thanks to Reach, and has late game utility in the form of Scavenge. Yeah. Does it all. Yeah, exactly. It slices, it dices, yeah. it blocks fly. <laughs> Definitely a solid card, and as you can see, that Simic Manipulator is growing and growing. Now it's 2 3, so mm. all it really needs to do is evolve once more, and it's going to be a, a big threat. Twice more, right? It's three or less? Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, twice yeah. More, yeah. Two, two more evolves, and uh, that'll fall off. And a pair of Moss Dogs holding down the fort, although the. Um, what's that? The unblockable guy. Yeah, um, Sakenic has, has two pretty much um, invasion creatures, although the Moss Dog could block yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, 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 uh, the flyer. So Sphinx of the Chimes. Yes, yeah, Sphinx of the Chimes is five, definitely six, a powerful one. Five, uh, six, Flyer. If you have two cards with the same name in your hand, you can discard them to draw four cards. Not an ability that comes up in Limited all that often, but uh, the five, six, Flying Body, usually not something... Uh, joke around with. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, two Moss Dogs, once again. Double block it. <laughs> yep. And it's just a one-for-one one trade. So this just in Flincher actually already won the game. Finchler? Finchler, yeah. I'm going to put that L... Sure. <laughs> so he's up a game, and uh, that's pretty good. That was good a fast for, one. Yeah, really. Probably some mulligans in there, uh, if I had to guess. Yeah, uh, just some aggressive minutes. Rakdos or Boros draw. Yeah. All right, so we see a... a Drake one Crisis, the manipulator up to three, one more evolve. Yeah, maybe we can get Vartek to, to move his creatures, because it looks like they're starting to drift off camera. Yeah, a little off-centered. Yeah, we'll get that fixed for you guys. All these three power things that can block flyers, and... Uh, Sukenic just attacking with a bunch of unblockable dudes. I mean, you know, yeah, he knows not? that he's got his his time is limited before yes. that manipulator comes online and just takes it over. So he he's trying to trying to get in there, trying trying to put uh, the game onto a say three four three turn clock. Yep. All right. So there's a corpse blockade. Three mana, one four from Gate Crash Defender. Not that good, but you can sacrifice creature and. Give a death touch. Yeah, so it makes it uh, a bit better right there. Definitely uh, a playable card, but not too great in this situation. Yeah. Right As... now on the screen, we see the Simic Manipulator. Yes. So right now it's a 3 4. Evolve, remove one or more plus one plus one counters, and you're able to gain control of your opponent's target creature. So, uh, oh, there's a uh, removal spell for one of the evasive creatures, and, you know, Vartex stuck on four lands, so and it's pretty hard to play a four drop that's going to evolve a three four. Exactly. But it, if he gets a couple more lands, plays one more guy, then uh, the enchantment will actually fall off the manipulator. Manipulator gets active, and then you know that's that's going to be all she wrote. Yeah. If I had to guess. Yeah. Uh, so, Sukenik definitely still trying to close the game out as quickly as he can, activating his key rune and attacking every turn in lieu of playing spells. Just trying to get Vartek dead. Looks like he has him down to eight. So four more turns if he can get there. And he's doing a good job of it. Yeah, I mean, he's he knows his uh, his chance of victory is going to be to uh, use his unblockable creatures to finish the game before uh, the manipulator breaks out and stabilizes. 
And um, meanwhile, the fifth land is in play. Wow, and there is the creature to um, evolve the Simic Manipulator. 1-5 Flyer, uh, Vigilance. When it attacks, all your attacking creatures get plus one, plus one. Most importantly, right now though, is just the fact that it has five toughness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to evolve that Simic, Simic Manipulator to 4-5, uh, get the uh, enchantment to fall off, and now it'll untap and start stealing guys. Yeah. Dangerous stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely a dangerous card. I mean, definitely a first pick card, so we'll uh, we'll see what happens. So it looks like he uh, Skenik's gonna gonna have to have like hard removal for the manipulator now, right? Like, I don't think he can feasibly race it or beat it without something like a grizzly spectacle. Yeah, that's fair. So what do, what do you think his uh, his plan is here? Just peel a removal spell, or does he have? Does he, can he find an attack here? Yeah, I'm looking through Sakana's list right now. I'm trying to see what what you know what what he could draw. What can he really do? He does have two launch parties in his deck, so that could be pretty good. Yeah, that, I mean he's got the free dude to sacrifice. You know, his frozen uh, unblockable guy. Yeah, so launch I, party would definitely be uh, ideal here. Yeah, so I think he might be relying on that. Looking through into Gate Crash, he does have three Cloudfin Raptors. So, you know, this game, they're not really going to shine if he draws them. Unless he draws <laughs> yeah. two and he's able to discard them through the Sphinx of the Yeah, times. that's going to be his best use for those. Yeah, he also has a Night Veil Spectre. So his deck looks to be on the uh, powerful side his over deck, here. His deck seems sweet, but it seems to match up really poorly against Bartex. Like, Reach guys and Flying guys with huge toughness and Manipulator. Like, yeah, all, all those cards match up perfectly against, like, Cloudfin Raptor, 2-3 Flyer, Sphinx of the Chimes, etc. Yeah, um, I mean, so Skinnik is finding an attack here. Um, the Perilous Shadow with uh, a bit of Mana Flood is quite threatening, and I guess you can force trades here, um, or force unfavorable blocks thanks to your Shadow, so your other guys get to attack as well, maybe representing a trick. Um, not sure. I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the Runner's Bane did do some work. It stopped the Simic Manipulator for the first couple of turns, yeah. but now the Runner Beam fell off. Simic Manipulator is a 4-5, and it's looking pretty good for uh, for Vartek. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how do you how do you put together these blocks as Vartek? It's really tough. I mean, it depends what's in his hand. It depends what his strategy is. You know, maybe he has something in his deck like biomass mutation where he doesn't want to lose his guys maybe he has something in his deck like dramatic rescue where he knows that he could go down to a low life and just yeah gain some life back there so double blocking seems to be right here yeah i was actually these are the blocks that i was going to suggest um okay trade off your drink wing for the two three uh basically chump with the shadow but you force uh Sikinic to use his whole turn pumping sure and trade like one of the the mossy men for the sphinx of the chimes okay now a neat interaction is that in gay crash there was no scavenge right but now you can scavenge onto the scavenge onto manipulator. the evolved guy is super awesome yeah or yeah exactly yeah because you get to use those plus one plus one counters no matter how they got there yes. evolve or scavenge they still steal creatures yes exactly all right, so does Sakenic have anything else? Uh, no, it looks like he's just going to pass the turn. And now the Manipulator can theoretically steal the Shadow for two counters um, while Sakenic is uh, tapped low. And he could also use the Shadow because he has uh, Print Hat Prism. So he's Ooh, able to, that's cool. you know, to, to filter black mana. So just something neat right there. And I think that's... You know, it would be nice, but it's not going to happen because yeah, it'd be yeah. a corpse blockade. So, I, I think you still go for it and just use it as a removal spell. Yeah, I think the the shadow sort of in the abyss mode is a little too scary. Yeah. Um, at eight life, yep. There you see, you remove two counters to uh, get the shadow. And um, so kind of just going to sacrifice it. It's yep. yep. Going to get sacrificed to the blockade, and so now the manipulator just. I mean. Eating dudes, yeah. Doing what, doing what he does. I, I, the blockade minimizes the damage for now. Okay. Um, in the fact that you know, Vartek just is killing creatures instead of stealing them. But like, it's just pure inevitability. 
to, to use the magic terminology, uh, the game will inevitably go to the Simic Manipulator if left unchecked. So Kenneth is still looking for a removal spell. And what is this? A Cloudfin Raptor and a Fathom Mage okay. of the Raptor. Fathom Mage with Scavenge. Yeah, Another really awesome interaction. That's pretty nice. I can see how these guys are 6 and 1. Looks like powerful decks from both sides. Yeah, for sure. So and Kenneth's Kieran Attack, yeah. that's all he's got. Bringing Vartek down to uh, 6 life. No idea what that is. That is the uh, two mana O five. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, so, definitely, definitely not that impressive. But yeah, um, I'm not sure the exact name of it. Yeah. But it is, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, I think it's the Murmuring Phantasm. Okay, it's a I phantasm believe. that murmurs. Yeah, it's right. a, it's a it's just a two mana O five. It's not a phantom that mumbles. Oh, and there it is on the screen. Yes, Murmuring oh, Phantasm. Murmur. Okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, a card you don't really see much of. I, I don't think it's very powerful. I no, it's, kind of it's, definitely, it's definitely a controlling card, right? Like, if you if you think your late game is good enough to sort of waste or invest a card in nothing but early defense, like yeah. preserving your life total to get to that end game, then it seems fine. But it's definitely not, uh, like, a traditionally good limited card, right? Okay. Cards, cards that don't actively progress your board, clock your opponent, some, you know, deal with uh, uh, bomb-y creatures, yeah, sure, basic yeah. creatures, etc. Um Traditionally not that great, but depending on your deck, it, it, it can definitely be an inclusion. Also, the inflated toughness on some of the defenders, like uh, Hover Barrier or whatever, uh, are pretty cool with the Evolve guys. Yeah, definitely. Just in general. So it looks like Sakenic kind of drew a confident Raptor. Speaking of Evolve guys. And he's going to pass the turn. He, he can no longer attack with the Demir Key Rune. He can no longer activate the Demir Key Rune because of the Simic Manipulator. Yep. It is now untapped. You can just remove two counters, steal the Demir Key Rune, keep it forever. Yep, as as we kind of saw coming, and uh, I'm sure Jonathan did as well, the Simic Manipulator really taking over the game here. Definitely. And uh, waste or not wasting, using a counter to take the blockade so that any future creatures that the Simic Manipulator steals will actually be stolen and not just sacrificed. Um, there's the sixth land for the uh, the scavenge on the Moss Dog is like the nail in the coffin at yeah, this point. Yeah, for sure. And also Speaking of nails worm. in coffins, yeah, our model worm. worm double evolve all my guys, draw two cards from the manipulator, or draw two cards from the fathom mage, and put two more counters on the manipulator. Yeah, this is looking very, uh, very good for Bartek. Absolutely. This is your model worm, the mythic rare from Return to Ravnica. So, I don't really see it too much as standard anymore. I'm kind of confused why. It's just such a powerful card. It is. It's, uh, it's definitely good. Uh, you know, fairly outclassed by things like Angel of Serenity, but um, as we see the format progress, we may see more of them. I actually like his little brother from the new set, the Advent of the Worm, sure. the Flash Worm. That card is awesome. Yeah, definitely definitely a strong card there, too. Being able to play a really big threat in your opponent's turn yeah. is uh, something to consider wisely. All right, so there is just a chump block. I'm not sure what Sakenic's trying to draw to. He's uh, squeezing out this card here. Not too much. A white source and a merciless. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this this was looking, you know, I don't want to say game over because it's not quite yet, but really bad. I'm gonna shape go, for I'm gonna go out on a limb and say game over. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you never know. I mean, we saw some crazy games here, Sedgwick and I, yesterday and, and even today. So, hands your O5 for value. Aetherize is the only thing that I can think of, but... Yeah, uh, Aetherize will help a little bit. That only only delays the inevitable at this point. Even the Manipulator getting in there. Yeah. So it looks like uh, Vartek has multiple uh, runners being. Do you think Sakenic will go to a sideboard, maybe sideboard into a different color? If he, uh, you know, maybe they said, hey, we're going to give you some white cards, we're going to give you this keening operation. Yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely a lot of value to that, sort of uh, tuning your deck to to match up against your opponent's deck, right? Like, you want your cards to pair off favorably, and I think that sideboarding and limited in general is, like, pretty undervalued by the average player. Okay. I think that it's something that um, the better players, like, I know Ben Stark, like, best limited mind in the game today. Yeah. Uh, sideboard's more unlimited than anyone else I've ever seen. Okay. You know, I, I think that that's uh, definitely something 
that you should be looking to do, and in especially in these team formats where the way that the matchups uh, pair off, you can definitely sculpt your builds to 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 the matchup uh, quite favorably. Okay, so here we see a new match. It's uh, between Gareffi and Flincher. Finchler. Finchler. <laughs> And there's an Arrows of Justice we'll pick up here. There's an Ash Zealot that's coming across. There's a Celestia Kirun, and uh, there's the Gate Creeper Vine. I love the uh, the Plains Forest uh, Rakdos Guild Gate board. Yeah, this format's so awesome. It really for exactly is. that reason. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of, like the Ravnica format. Yeah. Just well, return to Ravnica. So. Yeah, we're back. Yeah, we've returned. There you see Ash Zealot on the uh, on the screen. Two mana, two two first strike haste. Whenever a player casts a spell from the graveyard, Azel deals three damage to that player. Now in this format, there's pretty much nothing from the graveyard you're gonna cast. But uh, haste, you know, for two two first strike. That's like fairly fairly reasonably sized. And haste along with battalion, yes, or the aggression of unleash. Like it fits quite well into both Rakdos and Boros. Yeah, it it, it really does. So Greffy with one of his mythic rares from the new set from Dragon Maze. This is uh, one call, uh, one green, one red. It is a star star with the number of counters you invest, so it's going to be a 5-5 five, five double strike. Oh, is this strike? the Hydra? Yes, yeah, yeah. Wow, the double strike Hydra. Yeah. And then you can pay one in a red, remove a counter, and shoot something? Yes. That's quite good. Yeah, maybe we could bring it up on the screen as well, so the players at home could see exactly what it does. Cinder Elemental, another X creature, but uh, not quite as powerful. Yeah. <laughs> There it is, Savage Born Hydra. So in addition to being a giant threat, I mean, it attacks for 10 this turn. It sure. also is uh, threatening to just like completely wipe Finchler's board. Take out the Elemental. You can take out the, uh, is that a Fire Fist Striker? Yes, Fire uh, Fist Striker. You can take that thing out pretty much at any point. With what? The, this thing. No, the, the Hydra just puts a plus one plus one counter on it. You're, oh. you're, you're allowed to, to make it grow. Oh, okay. I totally misunderstood what that card oh, did. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, there it is on the screen. Double strike. Enters the battlefield with the X plus plus one counters. For two mana, you can plus, put a plus one plus one counter on itself. You can only do it as a sorcery. Still really awesome card. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, I think that you probably want to pump it here to get it out of Cinder Elemental range. Okay, that's definitely um, fair. Which, at that point, once you're pumping it, like, shouldn't you do that pre-combat? Yeah, to, to just deal more damage. But he, instead, I guess he doesn't really care if it's going to get... That's make a 3-3 make a three, three gain life? Yes. So he's going to gain two life for each creature he controls. Which is going to be three creatures. So six life? Yeah. Or no, he activated his... Uh, I think he might have activated his key room for another, uh, another two life there. Well, then he doesn't have enough mana if he were to activate the key room, correct? One, no, it'd be no, he, mana from the key room for five. Oh, yeah, he, oh, he activates. Okay, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're doing. Yeah. So, surely as Fanslayer here, you have to spend your turn cindering down the Hydra, right? Like it's just too scary of a threat. You're gonna have to chump it next turn and every turn from there on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really too sure why he didn't pump the Hydra. Yeah, I, I definitely would have spent the spent uh, at least part of my turn getting the uh, the Hydra out of Cinder Elemental range. Yeah, and just sure enough, Finchler seven, seven. agrees. Just get rid of that Hydra while I can. Like I know I'm behind on board, but at, at least this is a recoverable position. Exactly. Whereas the the position facing down a growing double striker that is lethal and growing, like that that's just straight up impossible yeah, to come back from. Maybe he didn't know what the Hydra did. Maybe he thought a shot as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, all right, so another update. Ezagalani, also, <laughs> also one. These names are very difficult to pronounce. Yeah. So, the whole entire team is up. Is up again. That is not the best position to be yeah. uh, up against. <laughs> Back completely against the wall. Yeah. Wow, and that's the 6-6 uh, the six, six Reach Vigilance. Exactly. Whenever you play a non-creature spell, it takes six, six, six to the damage. gnome. Yep, and it has to attack each turn if able. Although I don't think that's much of a drawback. No, uh, definitely not. <laughs> he's well, definitely not here. Likely to be attacking uh, every turn no matter what. Sure. But um, even if Finsler had a removal spell for it, it would drop him to one. Yes. That's a pretty scary spot. Yeah, I mean... Finchler just has a bunch of 
two ones and a two two on the table. Yeah, well, really this is what happens much. when the uh, you know Boros Battalion aggressive decks enter the mid to late game. Yeah, its creatures are just outclassed. Its spells aren't that powerful. It really needs to create an advantage uh, in the early game and use that advantage either to outright kill the opponent and you win, or get them in a spot where they have to make such unfavorable trades, they have to trade down at such an unfavorable rate that you're advantaged into the mid-game and then can convert that advantage before you enter this mid-game where you're not favored anymore, and none of those things happened. Oh yeah, that, that definitely makes sense what you're saying here. So here we see an attack from the Kirun, the Centaur, and the 6-6. Looks like a triple block on the 6-6 is the only option. Yeah, and eventually we're going on to one life here? Yeah, trading his squad, going down to one, facing two lethal creatures, and the rest of his opponent's turn. Which is just the guild gate, but... Yeah, guild gate past the turn. Punish after uh, damage, so yeah. that, you know, he doesn't take six from the uh, guy, but he doesn't draw an answer for the 3-3. Three, three. It's going to kill him, and Giraffe evens up the match. Yeah. All right, so Finchel has a game, Giraffe has a game. So, I mean, it's the right start for his team. Yeah, the comeback train. Yeah, maybe. That'd be nice. Now, both both teams right here are 6-1, so the winner would move up to 7-1. Unlikely they'll be able to draw the last round. But still staying alive for the elimination rounds. That's exactly. what's important. Yeah. So this tournament is tough. A lot of teams, a lot of players. Got to go 8-1 to make top 8. Actually, got, got the top 4, so 8-1 to make top 4. Yeah, these things are cutthroat, man. Yeah, double yeah. elimination, like. Yeah, so so you ended up not playing, AJ? Correct. I slept in. Okay. <laughs> I uh, decided to come and just hang out, watch. I've been watching uh, Huey, Owen, and Reed sure. tearing it up all day. Uh, yeah, jump in the booth, hang out with you, Gerard. All right, awesome. Thanks, AJ. Yeah. All right, so we see best tap two lands. Play a uh, boar clam charger. Three two. Uh, Chainwalker. Chainwalker. Gorehouse Chainwalker. And it looks like a dutiful thrill. Pretty nice little answer there with the black mana to regenerate. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm gonna oh, take a look at Bess's list. See exactly what uh, what ooh, he has. What I love this at. guy. The the four four. Well, it's a two two. Yes. With haste, and when it comes into play, it's a four four for that turn. Yes. Awesome, awesome battalion enabler because you can play like your two drop battalion guy, your three drop battalion guy, and then this thing on four, and you automatically have battalion that turn. Plus, he's hitting for four. It's like pretty outrageous, and then you still have Battalion the next attack. Yeah, it's very a, awesome. The Machino First Blade, if you guys want to take a look at it on screen, we'll try to bring it up for you. We, we saw it earlier today, we saw it in round three, I think we saw it in round five. One of the better aggressive cards for sure. Yeah, it really is. Just such a powerhouse card, and a card you really want in your Boros deck. Absolutely. And then uh, Dutiful Thrill and a 1 3. So the complete opposite on the other side of the board, we see like exclusively defensive creatures. These these might even be sideboarded in yeah. uh, specifically for this this matchup, which is completely reasonable. Pursuit of Flight from the Boros deck, just plus two, plus two. Once again, maximum aggression all the time. I'm not the biggest fan of Pursuit of Flighting onto the 2-2 two -two and not onto the 3-2. Why would yeah. you not want to make it a 5-4? And, and why? Maybe the, the three power is... Uh, Looks like an aerial maneuver. Aerial maneuver on the Gorehouse Chainwalk prevent the trade. Hit for four from the uh, first blade, and pretty dominating board. Uh, as a Galeon, gonna have to uh, have a pretty good turn here. He's got the mana. Does he have a play that will help stabilize this pretty scary board? Yeah, I'm not too sure. We'll, we'll have to find out. Sunspire Griffin, not a bad play. Looks like he's got a couple options here, actually. Yeah, but does Thrill anything really Assassin, do anything? Also pretty nice. Does anything really help him? You know, well, does anything, has anything to pull out of this? It's, uh, oh, he goes with the, uh, the lifelink um, extorter. Yeah. So, like, your dutiful throw is, like, locked down on the 4-4, right? Like, sure. you're, you're, you're basically down a black mana and your dutiful throw. Like okay. That thing, that thing is on, on block and duty. Um, and then you have a bunch of options to either trade with the 3-2 okay. or extend your board. Wow, madcap skills. Yeah. Eggs, meat, basket. 
player is all in. We have a 7-4 creature that must be blocked twice. Yeah, two creatures have to block it. So the dutiful thrall can no longer do it. He was on guard duty, but now he needs a friend. Yeah, definitely. Now something like a smite would be really bad here, but... Yeah, if he has the removal spell, then it's, you know, the full three for one and stabilize the board, that's a huge swing. But if he doesn't have the removal spell, then he's going to be under a lot of pressure. It looks like there's an Orzhov charm. And Is that an Orzhov charm? That's what it looks like. Maybe we could check on his deck. If that's an Orzhov charm, it. then that is definitely going to be a good play for him. But it's mm, not an Orzhov charm? Ooh, he it does is. indeed have right. an Orzhov charm. So it is the Orzhov charm. We can pull Orzhov charm up on the screen for you guys at home. Uncommon from Gate Crash. Yeah, one there white, it is. One black. Three different abilities, just like all the charms. A bunch of abilities, but this time it's going to be Vendetta. Yes. Kill a guy, lose life equal to his toughness. So the full three for one, he's going to take four damage from it, which is, you know, it not nothing. Charm. Yep. Definitely not nothing, but um, it's still fairly scary. And the dutiful thought chunk blocking. I guess he wants to use that black mana for the rest of the game. Uh, yeah. Likely to extort, right? Like I, I really if, don't like a couple of these plays, to be honest. But well, he's, he's going to nine from the charm, so sure. like he doesn't want to go to six. That's, that's a reasonable life total to prevent yourself from going to. Like, you know, th there are a couple things you could die to from six. Uh, okay. It is it is a fairly conservative play, but after getting a full three for one, I think that you know, sacrificing one card, turning your three for one into a two, or, or yeah, your one for three into a two for three, like you're still advantaged on the exchange. Um, extort theoretically gonna gain you enough life that uh, look I don't want to say more life than the dutiful throw would save you but enough life that it's like fairly mitigated that you're you're down a blocker um, it's certainly conservative play I would understand why you'd have reservations about it uh, but I also understand why he would make such a block and there's a griffin with extort and uh, on the other table we see that Jonathan Sukenik has tied it up against Vartek and they are also going to game three. And there you see players going over Finchler's mulligan decision. Do I keep this? Do I not? One of the more important parts of the uh, team format. You know, a lot of times in uh, the team format, like a game is pretty intensive. A lot of plays depend on how the game's developed. It's kind of hard for a player to jump in at a certain point. Um, but mulligan decisions, you know, your teammates know what your deck is. They can help you with the mulligan decisions. Uh, so that's one of the more common questions that we see players ask their teammates. Sunspire Griffin looking to trade with the Glorehouse Chainwalker here after uh, the Lifelinker got in for two. And I mean, I would say this is a stabilized position. I don't yeah, want to say I don't want to say it's a winning position, but it's certainly a stabilized position. Best gonna have to pull out some uh, some heavy hitters, and he starts with uh, Rebel Belt Maka, uh, yep. the. 3-3 three, three for 4. Hill Giant it has Blood Rush, but once it's in play, it's just the Hill Giant. Exactly. You see a Thrill Kill Assassin in yeah, so uh, Iguan's hand. More super awesome defensive cards. I don't imagine the Thrill Kill's getting unleashed here. Um, although the, this position is so favorable that uh, you know he's all the way up to 12 life, going to 13 on the extort from the Thrill Kill. Theoretically, like that, that's a high enough life total. Wow, and there's a uh, the Blood, Blood Baron. Baron. Yep. Four four, lifelink. Protection from black and white. And if you are at thirty or more, and your opponent's at ten or less. Yes, this is exactly how it's it works. plus six plus six in flying. So basically, instant kill. But for now, it's a four four lifelinker with protection from white and black. That is <laughs> that is quite a threat. I mean, Bane Slayer Angel and all. Ooh, Traitor's Instinct. Wow. That's going to be a pretty nice swing of life. Doesn't deal with the the Blood Baron outright, but, you know, you, you buy yourself some time with the extra padded life you're getting from it. Um, preventing a block so that your, your Hill Giant gets in for an attack. I mean, definitely not the, not the worst play, but... Uh, it's also not not a clean answer, you know. It's not not. It doesn't remove the actual scary part, which is the four four life linking body. 
Sure. I think Best also has an act of treason in his hand. So next to steal it again. <laughs> yeah, so next turn we might uh, we might pretty much see the same exact thing. Yeah, I mean if the play's good for this play, good enough for this turn, might as well you know do it again next turn, I guess. Yep. So as you go on, he's gonna go down to three, but then he's yeah. probably gonna go up to about yeah. eight next turn. Yeah, three three Eleven seems maybe. scary. <laughs> yeah. Three seems scary, but when you realize that he's gonna hit for four lifelink and get at least one extort off of or at least four lifelink, maybe six. Okay. Plus the extort off of the thrill kill. Um, that is, that, that'll bring him up to 10. Yeah, it'd be a totally different game. Yeah, that is, that is a tough, tough life total to close out. It definitely looks really good for Ezeglon. I mean, we saw him sacrifice his dutiful thrill earlier for three points. Would have saved a little life in the meantime, but you know, you can see how how thin that line was to tread okay. of his life total and why he would make such a conservative block. Um, you know, had he not drawn the lands that turn previous, he wouldn't have had mana to regenerate. And then that turn, he wouldn't have had mana to regenerate, uh, thanks to playing the Blood Baron and a Guildgate as his sixth land. Uh, def it was definitely a sound sacrifice. Yeah, and it looks like Best has drawn a Boros Elite not really going to do too much yeah now yeah the the turn the turn nine or whatever boris elite not that impressive so what what can best do here to try to win this game i mean i'm thinking like homing lightning on the the blood baron's got to be the start right okay you need you need a non-white removal spell to take out the blood baron i don't think you can win with the, while the blood baron's in play he doesn't even have a red creature to like threaten a double block so that the blood baron can't attack anymore um, that would also be a fine start to, to lead with, uh, you know, if he draws a, a non-white creature, sure. non-white, non-black creature that can um, threaten a double lock with the Hell Giant. Maybe then you have more time to draw into a removal spell like a Homing Lightning, which I'm actually going to check to see if he has an out to the Blood Baron. Yeah, count, count how many outs he actually has as Ezeglon gets in for four more damage, gaining four more life. In a very dominating board position, he's up a game, and uh, does not look like he has a homing lightning. He's got a mugging, but that's not going to do it. There's a basilica creature uh, with an extort trigger. Yeah, it doesn't actually look like Hepburn Best has any real answers to uh, to the Blood Baron. I think he drew a Rakdos calculator. Is that an answer? Mm, no. Are you sure? It's, it's actually kind of funny because uh, it's even though it's a red creature, so that. Uh, you know, you, you could double block. It's also black yeah. with hybrid, so you actually can't because the protection from Black Claws coming up against the Boros stack, uh, thanks to the hybrid Rakdos Cackling. All right, so Best is going to play this out. Now, do you think there's any argument at all where the game is looking so bad for you, for example? Mm -hmm. All right, you're, you're probably, I don't even know a percent chance you, you, you could win. Any chance to, you know, kind of maybe scoop up a game and help your teammates? Absolutely. Like in these team formats, I mean, once you once you're drawing completely dead, you know, even if I'm like one percent to win, I yeah. think I'm gonna play it out because you know. It, oh yes. Yeah. Th there's still like value there. Okay. But one, once you're completely cold, like you, there's nothing else you can do. Sure. And it, it's definitely correct to just pack it in and and uh, go help your teammates try and try and finish the match strong. Okay. Yeah, I'm one usually to, to never concede for the most part, but yeah, I can, until I can... you're completely dead, I I, I agree. Okay. And, you know, with an active treason, he's definitely not completely dead. I would definitely put him at, you know, sub 5% to win. But, sure. But it's definitely not a favorable position. But uh, I definitely don't think that there's a reason to scoop quite yet. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely not. This game is still going on. It's just, it just looks poor yes. for, uh, for best. Yes. And uh, so the thrill kill going on the 3-3, completely understandable block there. Uh, the Boros Elite is a uh, battalion, so that would be a theoretical 7 uh, gaining best for life. Uh, Ezegolian, considering a chump block here on the Boros Leap with the Screecher, actually don't think he has to. Oh, no, definitely not. Uh, but I would understand why he would, you know. Um, I think that it's better to hedge against uh, peeled homing lightning for your Blood Baron, still have a threat in the form of a flyer and extorter. Yes. You're going to gain enough life from the extort and your other lifelink guy. 
uh, and the one more pretty much guaranteed hit you're going to get out of the Blood Baron, that's going to give you enough of a padded life total that you're not, you don't have to worry you're getting burned out or whatever, even if you get Homing Lightning. And uh, that's exactly what it does. He just takes the three from the Boros Elite. Now he gets to attack back for a bunch of lifelink. He's got two extorters. Uh, you know, his life total is going to go up to, uh, what, 14 or so? 15 or something like that? Yeah, depending on how many spells yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he ends up playing. Really, really favorable spot. Well-sculpted game. Um, fairly aggressive start from best. But, uh, you know, he basically the game came down to that one turn with the Madcap skills. Right? Yes. He was fa fairly all in at that point. Like, if you don't have a removal spell, then you're in the Abyss and locked down with the Thrall. Okay. But if you have a removal spell, then I'm basically out of gas. Sure. Wars of Charm, finishing it off. Uh, Ezeglion having enough uh, life gain with his Life Linkers and Extort to stabilize, uh, to, to gain life once stabilized, to not be under under threat. And, um, yeah, the, the Mythic rare from... Um, Dragon's Maze. Yeah, so there we see an Azorius Arrester. Can't arrest the Blood Baron. No. He's above the law. He, he really is. Just like Steven Seagal is above the law. Exactly like Steven Seagal. I like Seagal. that movie. I'm going to go home and watch it. <laughs> Can I borrow it? Or do, do you have a copy of it? Yeah, I got it on DVD. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah. All right, so he gets in for just three damage here. Boris Leaf does not have Battalion. Rakdos Calculator is a 2-2 because of the Unleash. And Ezelon will untap and draw. I see a Synth Collector in his hand, which is pretty nice. Yeah, just make sure the coast is clear. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure why you'd want to want to swing him with the... Uh, they're, they're detained. Yeah, yeah. They are arrested. Yeah, exactly. Collect your sins, extort for two. A card that is definitely breaking into standard. As yeah, we definitely. saw Chris Van Meter winning... Uh, Winning the main event yesterday, well, yeah. this morning. Yeah, this morning he uh, the standard open, taking it out with taking it down with Junk Reanimator with Sin Collectors. They said he said that they performed beautifully for him all weekend and um, quite good in limited as well. I mean, it's a you know it's a reasonably costly creature two two one for three. That's like completely fine, you know, on par. And the ability, if you hit a removal spell or or a bomb of some kind, it's just overwhelming value. Yeah, definitely, definitely good points you bring up there. So best is down to eight life. Pretty much facing lethal next turn. And, and there's the hand. Turn. So best gets I mean, the he... worst of it. <laughs> I've been waiting to say yeah, that. Yeah, the I was gonna say how, how many turns you've been waiting for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean he took a gambit line that game, just kind of all in on uh, on the enchantments. Didn't work out. Uh, his opponent had the removal spell, and that was that. The the rest they say was history. Just cleaning up at that point. So, um, Sukinik's team now down, or yeah, down a match. Uh, other two games in game three. As we move over to this game. This does not look good for Sukinik. Super full board. Doesn't really look that good for Sukinik, I would say. What do you think? I mean, what is. What creature is that? The Pontiff? Because if that's a Pontiff, then yeah, th yeah, this is the uh, the one that allows all your creatures to gain. yeah two seven. All your guys yeah. get extort. That thing is sweet. It's the Pontiff of uh, Blight, I believe. Although it is kind of embarrassing when like half of your mana sources are blue. Yeah, <laughs> you can't extort off the islands. But um, definitely a powerful card. As we see some fairly unfavorable blocks forced from Sekenic thanks to the Armada Worm pressure his opponent is bringing. No follow-up play, but a oh, wow. fairly dominating board. Alright, Garefi wins, so it all comes down to this. Wow, Th Garefi this wins is his right game here. three. That is the Pontiff of Blight. Sekenic's down to seven. I'm getting excited. Yeah, this this is a pretty tense game. The Pontiff, you know, um, bouncing one of the worms off, uh, sort of negating his, his combat skills. So, and an Unleashed Flyer not really doing that much besides having Extort, thanks to the Pontiff. Sure. Cloudfin Raptor, Extort for two. So the mechanic will go up to nine. And I see a Night Veil Spectre in his hand. Now, he can play it here for an additional blocker and evolve the Raptor, Extorting for one. Or he can save it for next turn, play it off of three islands and Extort for three. Yeah. Four if he draws a Swamp. So well, that, that's the decision that he's trying to make right now. 
and it's actually pretty close, I think. Yeah, I mean, he's close to uh, be facing down lethal. 5-5 five, five, trample, 5-5 five, five, trample, 3-3 three, three guy, so. Yep. So let's see, the, the Pontiff would block the 5-5, five, five, and presumably he would be forced to take 8 there since Chumping doesn't get him anywhere. He would be going down to 1. That's a fairly precarious position. He does choose to play the Spectre, extort for 1, evolve the Cloud from Raptor. Now he has a fairly reasonable block, like he can double the Spectre and the Raptor on the 3-3 three, three if he really wants to. Um, you know, it, it can then scavenge onto a 5-5, five, five, but like you're going to have to draw a removal spell or something at some point anyway. What do you think about just triple blocking and a modern worm? And risking going down to two. That That is also a completely reasonable line. Yeah. Um, you know, you know that your opponent's playing off the top. If he drew a Blood Rusher, good beats, you lose. But if he doesn't draw a Blood Rusher, then you're actually closer to a, much closer to a stabilized position. You're trading like one of your, or you're trading your two flyers for your two, your two uh, untapped flyers for the worm. Then your pontiff can match up against the other worm and all you're worried about is the 3-3. Three, three. Exactly. I think, I think that that's a, definitely a reasonable position to be in. Yeah, and if you think about it, he, he's banned colors. The only blood rush creatures could be the Batterhorn plus yeah. 3 plus 2. Ooh. And there we see the pontiff getting locked down. He still gives everything extort, but that 2-7 body yeah. was really important in the stabilization of this game. Sukenic was counting on that to be able to negate one of the worms uh, to help him stabilize. With that out of the way, the worms really... Sukenic doesn't have any favorable blocks. And Sukenic's just going to go to one life. He has to chump, chump, and go to one. Might as well call Sukenic the runner, because that is the bane of his defense. Oh, huh. Take, Yeah, thanks. How long did you hold that one in for? I, I just came up with it because I just saw the card come up on your screen. And you can see there, that is what's locking down that Pontiff. And uh, Vardic and his teammates working out the blocks, making sure that they're not missing anything. I guess they're seeing if the, um, the, the chumps are going on, you know, uh, like if the chumps are profitable enough that they don't risk dying on the backswing um, or whether they have to keep their reach guy untapped. They realize that uh, it's better to make both creatures chump. Yeah, well, of course. Uh, which is, is the correct conclusion, but you know. You got, you got six minutes left in the rounds. This is the last match that matters. Yeah. Or the last match going. It's all the marbles. It makes sense to double check with your teammates, triple check with your teammates. Make sure that you're doing everything right. You're not doing something stupid and leaving yourself dead in a favorable position. They come out of the tank with the right play, which is attack with all three creatures. Sukenic forced blocks. It's forced uh, chumps here, and he's going to end up taking eight anyway, going down to two with a locked down Pontiff, an unleashed creature, a key room, no hand. Not looking too good. Gonna, gonna have to be a pretty sick turn for Sukenic to pull out of this one. Yeah, I'm not really too sure what Sukenic could draw he here. He only has seven mana, so he can't even run the back door uh, prism into Merciless Eviction, which okay. is a, a pretty awesome sequence. But uh, he's a mana short from that. Don't know if he has any real outs here. Um, maybe... Aetherize or like gridlock to buy a turn, but that's not actually getting him anywhere. You know, Bluster Squall, same thing, just buys a turn, but um, that's not going to be enough. Just going to attack for two, pass. The forced Chump's last turn, decimating his board, leaves him dead. Three lethal attackers coming over. Again, he's thinking, what what can I do here? So he's he's gonna have to like activate Chump, have a blue removal spell, extort off of the Pontiff yeah. to survive. Either eyes would would be nice here, kind of, not really, because it would just replay our Motto Worm. Yeah, and get a new token. Yeah, and that's it. There's the so hand. Extends the hand. That was a pretty sick game. Yeah, like pretty Pontiff close. versus our Motto Worm. Yeah, we jumped in, you know, when... Uh, <laughs> we jumped in when there were some haymakers going Definitely. down. 